Good morning, everybody. It's midnight and beyond. Welcome to another episode of Midnight Hour, The Dream Diary. So, this dream was... wasn't really emotional, but just like the people that were in it, I guess, it made it emotional. Um, I had a dream that I was going to take a shower, and then on my way there, my dog was, like, sitting there. And that's unfortunately not possible in the real world because she's just no longer with us. Um, I was hesitant on whether or not I wanted to make this video because just even saying her name, like, it gets me choked up. But I was honestly, like, thinking about her and all the other dogs I had recently. And, um, I kind of wanted to talk about it, I guess. So... Um, she was just sitting there, and like I just remember seeing her, and I was like actually considering like taking her with me to the shower, like to bathe or whatever. It was really weird. And then like my shower got interrupted because I got accused of stabbing my sister with a knife or something like that. But that's beside the point. <laughs> Let's talk about um my dogs, I guess, because that's pretty much the entire dream right there. I only really had one dog that lived in my house, but like, my relatives all had dogs, and like, I consider them my dogs as well, so, um, as far as I'm concerned, I had like, seven dogs. I guess I kind of wanted to just talk about them all and stuff, because all of them are no longer here, so, I just talk about them and share memories with them and stuff, and hopefully I could get through it all without crying, let's see if we could do it. So I guess I'll start with the dogs that I saw almost as often as my main one and there were two dogs who lived with my grandma, they were her dogs and I remember she had like a lot of dogs growing up but like my grandma and like all of her family, like they raised animals for a living and stuff so I had like a lot of history with like a bunch of other farm animals and all that jazz but the dogs were like the only ones that like I actually knew and stuff. Um, I remember early on she had a schnauzer named Taffy and some other dog I still don't know what the breed of it is. It was a small white dog, short fur, and I think it was a boy. I haven't I never even met this dog or I never met Taffy or this other dog. This dog's name was Q, just the letter Q. Um, I knew Taffy from photographs. I've I don't think I've ever seen a picture of Q. Um, I know of Q's existence because in my grandma's basement there's a chalkboard and like in faded out letters you could see, like faintly see something that says Q is the best dog and I asked them who Q was and I don't know, like I know the breed because um, it was the same breed as another dog that I did know and that dog's name was Pokey. I don't know if Pokey was uh, Q's child or not, but uh, Pokey was the one I knew. And then there was another Schnauzer that I knew. Her name was Shotzi. And those were the two dogs that lived with my grandma that I always saw whenever I went there. I saw Shotzi more than Pokey because Shotzi was an indoor dog and Pokey was always outside. I don't know why both of them didn't just stay inside, but that was how it worked, I guess. I remember being afraid of Shotzi a lot when I was a kid because whenever you went to the door or whatever, like when we first showed up, she would start barking. That just scared me, but she never actually did anything. She just barked when you showed up and barked when you left. And so I was afraid of her a lot um, growing up. Pokey, I liked, but I didn't see her as often because she was outside and like we weren't really allowed to go outside, I guess, whenever we visited my grandma's house. But, um,. Yeah, I remember the two of them and stuff. Probably my strongest memory of Pokey was that she was the first dog I ever saw that had a, to get a cone. The cone of shame, as they called it up. I know, I just thought it was funny, but also I just felt bad for her. And eventually she got it off, of course, but Pokey, I think, was also the first dog I ever experienced dying. And that was not easy. I don't remember it too clearly nowadays but I can only imagine like how difficult that was when it first happened but she died when I was very young and Shotzi 
God, when did she... I... I think it was sometime during high school, maybe. It was either in high school or in, like, 8th grade. I can't remember. Shotzi had cancer, I'm pretty sure, and... And we kept her alive by giving her shots. <laughs> shots for Shotzi, I know. Um, like, we gave her shots and stuff, the things that she needed every day, like we came over to grandma's house every single day because she wasn't able to give her the shots, and like it was in the morning and night and everything, and Shotzi did not like those shots, so like it was not the easiest thing to give her every day, but eventually she just, like she lost the energy to even resist the shots anymore, and like it just was not helping. So, unfortunately, like, we had to say goodbye to her, and that's, was not fun, was not fun at all. Uh, the next dogs on my list that I want to talk about, they're, I also don't know the breed of this dog either, but she was like a very, a very small, like, medium size, like the same size as a schnauzer, like Shotzi was. Maybe a little bit bigger. She was a fluffy, very fluffy black dog. She had like white paws and maybe white around her like her face, but most most at least she was just black. Her name was Sarah. She was um, my aunt and uncle's dog. I really got to see her as well because I didn't always go over to my aunt and uncle's house, like not nearly as much as my grandma's house. And she was nice whenever I saw her. I honestly I can't remember her too well. I don't know why. Like, I remember she was nice. Then I don't have any bad memories, but like, she was a really good dog. And and I just wish I could remember like more details, like any memories or whatever. I just know that she was nice whenever I saw her. And I remember my uncle loved her so much. She meant the absolute world to him. And I remember the day that she had to go, like he took the entire day off from work and just stayed with her for the last day. And a while later, I don't know how much later after Sarah passed away, but my aunt and uncle got another dog after that. And she's a yellow lab named Lily. And she's still alive. I'm actually, the reason I'm talking about the still is because I'm actually housing her right now and babysitting her. She's hanging out at our house. And she is super nice, and she was a rescue dog. Like, when we first met her, she was all skin and bones. And I remember, like, they brought her to our house, like, the day they got her, and, like, she just laid on the living room floor for, like, three hours. And I stayed with her the entire time, and... Uh, she's, she's much, much, much better now. Like, a completely different dog, and she is... She's very nice. So, I'm happy to be taking care of her and stuff. So, I guess the next dog I could think of was my uncle's dog, my other uncle. Uh, this is the only boy dog I've ever had. Um, he was a beagle and his name was Bill. And I didn't really see him all that much because I didn't go over to his house either all that much, but um, Bill was a really nice dog. Like, he was the nicest dog you could ever imagine like he was just like old like not really late I guess kind of lazy just quiet laid back everything probably my favorite thing um about like his house and where he set up and stuff so Bill lived in a dog house but um he was still on a leash so he wouldn't run away or whatever but the leash wasn't attached to the ground or anything like that so his house was like under a tree and then like a few feet away from that tree was the actual house that my uncle lived in and there was a clothesline that connected from my uncle's house to that tree and the dog leash was attached to the clothesline and then to Bill so Bill like instead of just being attached to the ground or whatever his leash was attached to the sky and he could walk from his house up to up the stairs to my uncle's house if he wanted to, if he needed to go inside for whatever reason, if it was raining or whatever. And it was just a really cool contraption, I remember it was really cool. And 
like whenever I saw him, like whenever I went to his house, I would always go and see him because he was just the nicest dog ever. And one day we just got a phone call from my uncle saying that he had to bury him because he passed away. So it was just completely out of nowhere. So that just wasn't fun to hear, obviously. And then these next two dogs, this was, um, these dogs belong to my other aunt in California. Um, I obviously really got to see them because I, it's not every day I go out to California, but they were nice to me every single time I went out there. Uh, their names were Casey and Maggie. Casey was a black lab, very big and stuff like Lily. And Maggie was a tiny little wiener dog. And they were like, like you think they would fight or whatever, or they would be afraid of one another or something like that, but no, they were best friends. Like they loved each other so much and like they went everywhere together and they protected each other. And they were really nice. Like Casey just always wanted like petting and cuddles and stuff, but she was like so big and she was just like ram into, not really ram, just like walk slowly into you just walking forward and forward. Just get as much cuddle time as possible. And, uh, Maggie, like, also, like, sometimes she would jump up and, like, it was just the funniest dog ever seen, a wiener dog and stuff. Um, I remember whenever I slept over at their house, um, Casey would sleep with me. Like, and it was just a very nice feeling to have a dog sleeping with me. And also just, like, such a huge dog. It was really fun. And probably, like, the most memorable thing about Maggie was, um, one time... They were let outside. I think it was just Maggie who was left outside. Um, it had to have been both of them. I don't know. When like my, my aunt and uncle and like their family, they went out and like did errands or whatever. But considering it's California, you probably shouldn't leave a dog outside for too long, especially in the summertime. So when they got back, they found Maggie. And she had, this is going to sound really scary at first, but trust me, it's not as bad as I'm going to make it sound. She had a hole burned into her. I'm sorry I'm laughing at that, but like, it's not an, it wasn't an actual hole. Like, it was a big circle, like the size of like, like your hand, if you like make it into a fist or something like that. But it wasn't like burnt like she didn't open up or whatever like all her fur in that one big circle was gone and stuff and like the skin was burning so that was scary to hear about and stuff i wasn't there when that happened but it was a scary thing to find out about and then the next time i saw her she still had that big block like big hole of fur missing and she never got it back so the rest of her life she just had that big circle and it didn't hurt after the fact but lesson learned don't leave your dog outside during the summer if you live in California um so yeah it was just really weird and scary when that happened and I think Maggie was the most prominent one of aging like she was the one I was able to see age the most like even though I saw like Shotzi go through like cancer and being sick um, Maggie, like, her fur got very light, like, as time went on. Like, I remember her, like, when I first met her, she was very, like, a dark golden brown. And then, as time went on, she became very pale, very light brown. And eventually, Maggie passed away, and I heard about it and was very heartbroken. And Casey was also very heartbroken, like, she would just wander the house looking for her, and then when she couldn't find her, she was just, like, not do anything she just lay there and eventually Casey passed away as well so yeah all my dogs are kind of gone at this point Lily's the only one who's left but like she's not one of the original group but I still love her and stuff but of the original group um they're all gone and the the most painful one out of that group was my was my actual dog, um, and I saved her for last, and I'll try to talk about her maybe. 
So she was a beagle and her name was Cindy. And I, can't, I have not said that name in so long just because I'm always terrified to say it because of how cold it makes me feel and scared and everything. Um, let's see. She was just as nice as Bill was, like, Cindy was the nicest dog in the world, but then somehow Bill one-upped her in that, even. But still, Cindy was the nicest in the world, like, she was perfect. Um, as a kid, I wasn't really too crazy over her because she didn't, like, play with you all that often. She just sort of slept a lot and, um, she didn't know any commands, she didn't play fetch or whatever. And, but, now I, nowadays I realize just how perfect she was and I really wish I could have appreciated her more back when she was still alive. She was just so nice always there for me and I really appreciated that. I remember times where like I would pile like a row of stuffed animals or blankets and pillows like across a room and then she would just like jump over them and like we would just go back and forth over and over. She would just keep doing jumps over them. It was really cool. Um, she never barked, she howled, like, sometimes, but she never actually barked, and um, there were times, like, I don't know what she was trying to do, but, like, very rare occasions, she would, like, try and get up on two legs, and, like, she'd use her front paws to, like, grab your leg and everything, and she would, like, try standing up on two legs and stuff, I don't know what she wanted to do, I don't know if she wanted to dance, or, like, that's what we usually did, like, we would just dance with her, but, um... It was fun. Um, probably like one of my more famous stories was I got a donut from Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, it was a chocolate glazed donut. And then I brought it home and I was sitting on the bed. And then I turn around like I wasn't really paying attention. The donut was just sitting on the bed. And then I turn around for like a minute later. And I see that she had already eaten half the donut. And I got so terrified that like because dogs aren't supposed to eat donuts, so I was afraid that she was going to get so sick, and I'm just so worried. But she never got sick from it, and from that point onward, I just, I vowed to, like, never have a chocolate glazed donut ever again, just because, I don't know, it just reminded me of, like, that terrifying moment of almost hurting her and stuff like that. But now that she's gone, I only eat chocolate glazed donuts just because they remind me of her. Um... And there was this one time where on, was, like, our whole family went on vacation and Cindy had to go to, like, a kennel or whatever, so, to watch her while we were away. And our grandma was supposed to pick her up when we were coming back. I don't know why we just didn't get her, but, um, she went ahead and got her. And when we came home, we saw our dog, a dog in the backyard and it was a beagle but it wasn't cindy so my grandma had gotten the wrong dog at the kennel so we were all worried like something had happened and um we just went back to the kennel and like she was she was still there she just got the wrong dog by mistake so that was scary and another scary point was the only time she ran away from home like she's not fast well no she was fast like in her in her better years but um there was one time where the the leash I guess what that we just tied her to when whenever she was outside or whatever it broke like it completely snapped like not the leash part even like the metal part like the clip snapped off of the rest of the chain so that was interesting, like, how that worked out, but, like, she was just gone. Like, I don't think we were home. Okay, yeah, I remember. So, we weren't even home when it happened. We just came home, and we saw a message on our machine from our grandma saying that someone found our dog, and we were like, what are you talking about? And we like looked outside and she was gone and the chain was broken and we were terrified like what the heck is going on like she had apparently like ran to my grandma's house not like at my grandma's house but like um around that area which is like a mile away from our house and I'm just like amazed that she didn't get hurt or whatever and like 
she like climbed a hill is like assuming like the way she could have gone she either went like through a forest and like up and down crazy hills and through rivers and stuff or she went through the road which is dangerous but somehow someone found her and we got her back that same day but it was really terrifying uh, but eventually she also got cancer and it was just really terrifying because it took so much energy out of her and her tumor um, you actually got to see it grow it was like in her tail like right at the uh, top of it like near her butt and like tail like where that connects um, you just saw this giant ball grow in that in that area it grew to like the size of a tennis ball like bigger than that even it was really scary and um it was just a very hard time to go through and she would just keep throwing up more she wouldn't eat she wouldn't drink and then eventually the decision was that she had to get put down it was around my freshman year of high school and it was not easy was not easy at all and um, it's not a replacement but I have this beagle plush now that sort of looks like her we've had this plush in the house for like so many years but um, I have it with me still I keep it in my bed and um, it wears Cindy's original collar and has all of her dog tags and everything like that I also have Shotzi's collar but I'm pretty sure my grandma has the dog tags and Shotzi's collar is with a collection of photographs of just all my dogs and then Cindy is just over here like in spirit I guess I've only had like two dreams of her like ever since her passing like one of them was this one right here and the other one was like a bunch of years ago I dreamt that she just came back to life and I was so overjoyed. Like those are the only dreams I can even remember of her. So yeah, those are my dogs. And they're all gone. Lily's nice, but I really don't get to see her all that often. And like she's not with the original group, like I said. And there are these other dogs that um were brought into the house that um, right after Cindy passed like one of them was gotten right when Cindy started getting sick and she was meant as a replacement and the other one was gotten right after she passed and it was literal days and I told my parents constantly that I did not want another dog especially like during that moment but they did not listen and she got those two dogs and they are easily the worst dogs I have ever met in my life and they specifically hate me and they're the first dogs I know to bark they're the first dogs who like were not house trained and like they only bark at me and there are days where I just don't even come out of my room I specifically avoid eating or going to the bathroom or like anything just so I don't have to walk out of my room and get assaulted by them I'm not gonna talk about them anymore just they are not good dogs and I was against getting them and I'm against having them still because they were the absolute last thing I need after losing the greatest dog in the world and yeah they've not been good to me at all like especially compared to the, all the perfect dogs I had before them so, yeah, all my, all my real dogs are gone, and I don't know, it's sad, I just missed them a lot, and for the longest time I just didn't want any more pets after that, it's like all of them were gone, and the farm I had growing up, my family had, um, my grandmother had taken care of that farm, she's no longer with us, so that farm got shut down, all the animals are gone now. So, I don't know, 
I just lost a lot, I guess. Like, I've sort of kind of been, like, after finally a bunch of years have passed, I've sort of gotten, like, the urge to have another dog, but, like, not in this house. Like, I would want one, like, at some point when I had my own family in a different house and a different life. So, that's something I would want. Um, my favorite, well, my favorite dog breed, I guess. Um, I guess now it's Beagle just because of all the memories I have with Cindy, but, um, growing up I've always wanted a pug because I just love them so much and they just look super adorable. And, um, I also really love Dalmatians. Um, so if I ever got any dogs in the future in my own house, like, if it was a small dog, I would want a pug. If it was a big dog, I wouldn't want a Dalmatian. Um... Not right now, like, I'm sort of, I guess, sort of ready for a dog in general, but like, just not in this living establishment. I do not want a dog here. So, sometime in the future, maybe, I'll be ready for it. It's been like a dream project of mine, too. Now that all of them are gone, I wanted to hire someone to make a painting of all my dogs. Um, a friend of the family, I don't even know who it is, um, they painted a picture of Cindy and it's in her house and it was really nice. And, um, I don't know if I could contact them about it or I've had people online that I've considered like contacting but I just never got around to it. And it's also probably going to be expensive but I really wanted it to happen. And the thing is it wouldn't be a photograph though because there's never been a photograph of all seven of them together they've never been all together at once but um so if they could like make new poses for them or whatever and I just gave them a picture to base them off of and base the designs rather not the poses but I don't know, that'd be really cool if we could do that that's still something I really wanted to do but yeah I guess that's it really I just wanted to tell you about my dogs and stuff um, I appreciate Lily, but, um, I really miss, like, the original ones, the ones that I grew up with, and that meant so much to me over the years. So, I just wanted to make this video to say thanks for everything. Casey the Black Lab, Maggie the Wiener Dog, Bill the Beagle, Sarah the, I don't know what you were, Pokey the I don't know what you were, Shotzi the Schnauzer, and Cindy, my beagle, my best friend. Sorry if this one was a downer, but um, I just thought it would be possibly okay to talk about it. Also sorry this one's 30 minutes long. Uh. If you want to talk about your pets growing up or the ones you have right now, feel free to do that. Or if you had any dreams recently that you'd like to talk about, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. But otherwise, I will see you guys next time for another episode of Midnight Hour The Dream Diary. Thank you all for watching. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.